in the name of the Good Shepherd, the one who knows us and invites us to follow his voice. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. When we first started attending the Episcopal Church, we lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and had a toddler on my hip and one on the way. We were new to the whole parenting gig and healing from five years of failed attempts at finding a church that we felt home enough at that we could be ourselves, yet challenged enough to have our faith grow. We put all of our traditions from both of our families on the proverbial table and examined why we did each one. What was the history, the meaning, the memories? We asked ourselves, do we want to share these with our little growing family? What new ones do we want to infuse into the fabric of our lives? As I walked the halls of that 1950s built Episcopal church, I noticed many things. But the things that gave me pause were the icons. Peppered strategically throughout the building, I would wander in one room and out another only to find yet another icon that I'd never seen before. During one particular season, we had a retreat for adult education and we explored iconography, the ancient practice of writing prayers with the saints, windows into the witness they give us through the way they lived their faith. These saints often gave their lives for their faith. I soaked up this tradition. I was particularly enamored with the various icons of Christ. There were so many of them, from all over the world, too. Around that same time, we were having to make the transition of our oldest daughter out of her crib into her big girl bed. For parents, this is a big milestone, and with it brings, for some of us, big feelings. And for my little one, it was exciting to think that she would have this big bed now, but mostly, she was sad and a little afraid. That crib, besides my bed, was the only place she knew rest. The place she fell in love with books and babbled at the universe when no one else was around. It symbolized so much, and now she was being asked to give it to her baby sister, whom she hadn't even met yet. As we chatted with our priest over coffee one time, we mentioned how hard this was for our baby girl, and he suggested that we pray with the icon of the Good Shepherd. If it resonates, we should consider ordering one and putting it above her bed and telling her the story of the Good Shepherd at bedtime. The one we found is written based on the mosaic from the 5th century in Ravenna. It's one of the icons we've used over the pandemic with a prayer on the back for you to grow your own collection with. It has blessed her space for the past 15 years, and I hope it has been a blessing to yours too. I've always loved that icon not only for the meaning it carries for our family, but for the way it portrays the Good Shepherd. This particular pericope in John's Gospel this morning is such an interesting scene. We have Jesus entering the temple, and the text tells us he was walking in Solomon's portico. Some of you may already know what a portico is, but I had to refresh my memory. It's such a fascinatingly unique word. Isn't it? Well, I was following one of these little rabbit trails for a bit, and it occurred to me that the descriptors had some clues for us as to the meaning in this text. Jesus, in this morning's lesson, was surrounded by religious leaders who were questioning him, trying to entrap him, catch him, so they could finally be rid of him. They knew about his teachings, where to find him, and what was important to him. And he had words for them about his questioning, which revealed how very little they really did know of him after all. He said, I have told you and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. To follow Jesus was and is not a simple or easy task. Many have tried. Most have failed. Some have even traded their comfort for the way of the risen Christ. To 
to follow Christ then and now is to subscribe to a way of being that looks always to the edges, to where the least, the less, and the lost are pushed to, to where people are who are hungry, naked, hurting, lonely, and invisible. To follow Christ then is to engage in a ministry of intentionally seeking out ways to feed people, clothe people, heal people, connect with people, and see people. To know the voice of the Good Shepherd is to know the voice of kindness, love, compassion, empathy, connection, vulnerability, and passion. So my friends, my prayer for you this week, for us, is that we will pull out this icon that the church sent us, and that we will study it. Look upon its detail and take note of what we notice, what you see. Allow your eyes to soften and be drawn to a particular detail, and then sit with that invitation for just a few moments. The whispers of the divine are gentle and quiet, loving and generous, kind and curious. Jesus said to them, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Amen.